but she blurted out that she hadn't told her family about her condition. She was met with looks of disbelief from her fellow patients, feeling that this was not the place for her either. Mary got up and walked out. What Mary didn't expect was that early in the morning, someone from the support group came to her door and brought her a big pot of food. Faced with this pot of food, Mary didn't know what to do with it, so she got her brother and her black sister to share it at home. The party is very lively and individuals have their own company to chat with. No one notices Mary and she is left to get drunk and drink alone. The next day, Mary wakes up to find that the neighbor's dog is licking her feet on her bed. The dog has been clinging to her lately and Mary wonders why. That day, Mary drives out and backs up her car, knocking the dog over and she has no choice but to take the dog to the vet. Faced with an aggressive neighbor, Mary immediately apologized. But then neighbor said, What kind of cancer is it? No, he doesn't have cancer. He has a broken leg, which I'm paying for, I promise. What kind of cancer do you have? So the neighbor became the first person who knew that Mary had cancer. They sat her day together and talked about life and the future. Mary had someone to talk to and became more optimistic, but her behavior also became more crazy. The boy is watching a small video in his room when his mother bursts in, and the two of them are extraordinarily flustered to have their secret blown. But not more than three seconds later, the mother watched it with her son. She also told her son that it was just a video and the effect was nothing like the real thing. She also told her son that girls are mouthy, and the reason why this mother did this was that she wanted her son to grow up quickly and that she was running out of time. To lighten the mood with her son, the next day Mary invites her son to join her in a bathtub race in hopes of making some more good memories. But Bob offers to have his father join him. Mary has to call her husband, who has been kicked out of the house, back in and they easily take the title. At the celebration, everyone's face was full of happiness, but none of them knew that Mary had cancer. Even though it was getting worse and the doctor told her, that a cyst had been found in her lower back and the cancer had metastasized. Instead of being afraid, Mary thought it was an aesthetic problem. Mary had the cyst removed alone and the doctor asked where his family was. Mary didn't answer. It turned out to be an old neighbor lady who wanted to pick her up. But unfortunately, at this time, the old lady's Alzheimer's disease, looking at the slippers in the refrigerator, did not know what to do. This day Mary offered to ask her brother to accompany her home, while her father Saturday in front of the TV only focusing on the ball game. Mary has to tell her father that she may be seeing him for the last time. Hey, easy. I'm not that old. It's not always about your dad. The conversation between father and daughter breaks down, and Mary holds her mother's ashes and scatters her into the ocean to set her mother free. She laments that she can't accept the fact that she died and was burned, but her brother teases that you're not going to die tomorrow. However, Mary takes the opportunity to tell her brother that she has cancer. The brother freezes, but breaks down into tears when he gets an affirmative answer from Mary. Mary laughed at his brother's sadness and told him that he had lied to him. Mary doesn't know if she has a tomorrow, but what she values more than anything else is the present. With her pension advance, the woman buys a red convertible, but she only drives it for a day before selling it. She also carries around a thick stack of bills and drops a $200 tip when she sees a waitress. Mary was diagnosed with terminal cancer, which she gladly accepted, but hiding the full extent of her illness from her family. Her actions and behavior became frantic. After having dinner with her primary care doctor, she looks at the lobster in the bathtub with pity and just sneaks it out to save it. The doctor went to look at the house and asked her to help advise him. Mary even graciously pretends to be the doctor's wife and flirts a bit in front of the sale with impunity. Looking at the swimming pool in the backyard, it was more than she had ever dreamed of having. Mary Saturday at the edge of the pool, put the lobster in the water and finally swam in the pool herself, enjoying the freedom with the lobster. She knew, however, that the time she had left was as bounded as the pool and could not be extended any further. The beautiful day came to a quick end. Mary parked her car in the rented garage and wrote a card. It was her 18th birthday present to her son, and she didn't make it to steps before backing up, changing 18 to 30. How Mary wish she could have seen this day? Heading out the door, the sky was raining sun, and instead of looking for shelter, Mary was straining her stuff. The sun was shining on her body, but her mood was bleak. It was Mary's first birthday after cancer, and she bought a wedding cake and ate it with an old neighbor lady. Because the wedding day was her happiest day, she envied the old lady, and Pixon was an old age she could not have. At that moment the sun bursts in and wonders why they are eating cake. He didn't know it was his mother's birthday. On this day, Mary comes home from work as usual, and her husband scurries out of the room with a crowd, looking around the room full of family and friends. Mary was taken aback. They had come to celebrate his birthday, but none of them knew she had cancer. After not seeing her best friend for 15 years, Mary partied with her happily. 
and blew out the candles on her 45th. Looking at the cake, which looks like a tombstone, Mary's face is embarrassed. She thanked her husband, but followed it up with, You know, I've just realized I haven't been happy. It made her husband's face more or less look bad. The party was over, and Mary sent her friends off with a smile. The old neighbor lady couldn't find her way back, so Bob had to help her back. Mary was relieved to see Bob helping her home. When she got home, she saw that her husband was upset about what she had said. Her husband was breaking things like a child, which made May's heart sad. The next day, Mary eagerly teaches her son to drive. She wants to witness her son's growth and is afraid that she won't be able to wait until he becomes an adult. However, she is bumped into by her husband, who does not understand May, and the two begin to argue. Later that night, the drunken husband forces Bob to drive. He is very scared, but is encouraged by his dad to drive the car, and ends up crashing into a tree before he gets very far. Mary rushed to the hospital after learning the news, so Bob only received seven stitches, and his life was not in danger. Looking at her unreliable husband, the two of them couldn't avoid another fight until they spoke up. I want a divorce. At this moment, she suddenly lost her way. Shortly after her son was also discharged from the hospital, Mary happily hugged him. A group photo was taken to record the beautiful moment. Mary found a neighbor to discuss with her, to retain her black sister who wanted to drop out of school, to reminisce about life with her best friend. She decides not to hide it anymore. Mary finds her husband and tells him, 